So for this problem, I'm given a constant vector field, f of x, y, and z, which is 0, 0, negative 1. And I'm given a surface m, or the description of one. And m is the bottom hemisphere of a sphere of radius 3 centered at the origin with a disk on top closing the surface. So let's try to draw that surface. So here's my hemisphere, and this disk on top is closed. And I want to positively orient m, so I'm going to say it's oriented outward, and let me draw some normal vectors. So straight up on the disk, and then just out of the circle. So I'm asked to find the flux of f through m in newtons meters squared let's say f is in newtons, where you use the default outward pointing almost orientation of m. Got that orientation set, now I just want to calculate the flux. So I've technically got two pieces here, the hemisphere and the disk on top of it. So I'm going to separate those and calculate the fluxes of them separately and then add them together. So first let's do the disk. And I want to parametrize the surface before I can take its flux integral. So let's think about using like cylindrical coordinates. So I've got r cosine theta, r sine theta, and z. Well, here I know z is constant at 0, so I can parametrize in terms of r and theta. So that will give me r cosine theta, r sine theta, and 0. And the disk goes all the way around, so theta is between 0 and 2 pi. And then I was told that the hemisphere had a radius of 3, so the sphere, ah, excuse me, the disk must as well, so r goes between 0 and 3. All right, now to calculate the flux through this disk, I need to find the vector field at r, so f of r of r of theta. Um, but here f is constant, so that's pretty easy, and that's just going to stay the same at 0, 0, negative 1. And I want to dot that with the cross product of the two partial derivatives of r. So r sub r and r sub theta. Let's go ahead and find r r. So I'm just going to differentiate each term with respect to r, and I'm going to get cosine theta sine theta 0. Now let's find r theta. So again, I'm just going to differentiate each term with respect to theta. And I'm going to get negative r sine theta, r cosine theta, and 0. OK. And then to find their cross product, I'm going to use a 3 by 3 matrix and cofactor expansion. So the top row of this matrix is just going to be the vector components i, j, and k. The second row of the matrix is going to be r sub r, and the third row is going to be r sub theta. Okay. Now to find the i component, I want to cut the top row and cut the leftmost column. So I'm taking the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix, sine theta 0, r cosine theta 0, which is just going to be 0 because I have a 0 column. Now let's find the j component. So now I'm going to again cut the top row and this time cut the middle column. So I have a determinant of cosine theta 0, negative r sine theta 0, which again is going to be 0 since I have one 0 row, excuse me, column in the matrix. Now for k, I'm going to cut the rightmost column, which is my zeros. So I'm going to get a term here. So I have r cosine squared theta plus r sine squared theta, which just gives me r. All right. 
And then when I dot that with 0, 0, negative 1, I'm going to get negative r. And I can integrate that to find the flux through the disk. So r is going to go between 0 and 3 and theta between 0 and 2 pi, just like I set up in my parameterization. And let's go and start integrating. Well, the integral of negative r is going to be negative 1 half r squared. I'm going to evaluate from r equals 0 to r equals 3. So let's plug in a 3 for r, and I'm going to get 9 halves. And then when I plug in 0, I just get 0. So I've got 9 halves that I want to integrate with respect to theta. Well, 9 halves is a constant, so when I integrate, I'm going to get 9 halves theta. And you want to evaluate from theta equals 0 to theta equals 2 pi. Well, 9 halves times 2 pi just gives me 9 pi. Excuse me, negative 9 pi. Drop my negative sign, but it needs to carry through. So I've got negative 9 pi. And then when I plug in theta equals 0, I just get 0. So the flux through that disk is negative 9 pi newton meter squared. Okay, now I need to find the flux through this hemisphere. So let me head over to the other board and let's go ahead and work on that one. So to parameterize this hemisphere, let's think about spherical coordinates. So I'm going to write down kind of the general spherical coordinates spiel. So the typical parameterization for a sphere would be in terms of rho, theta, and phi, and it's rho sine phi cosine theta, rho sine phi sine phi, yeah, rho sine phi sine theta, and rho cosine phi. I want to parameterize with respect to two variables, so I'm going to let rho be constant since I know that the radius of that hemisphere is 3. Now, there are two components I need to calculate the flux through this hemisphere. One is the vector field, F, uh, kind of evaluated over the hemisphere, so F of the parameterization, which F is constant, so that's still going to be 0, 0, negative 1. So now I need to find R phi and R theta. So let's go ahead and start with R theta. I'm going to differentiate each term with respect to theta. So for the first term, I have negative 3 sine phi sine theta. And for the second term, I've got 3 sine phi cosine theta. And then for 3 cosine phi, that's actually just a function of phi, not of theta, so it's treated like a constant, and when I differentiate, I'm going to get 0. Now let's work on r phi. This time just differentiate each term with respect to phi. So here I've got 3 cosine phi cosine theta. And then here I've got again 3 cosine phi sine theta this time. And for the third term I'm going to get negative 3 sine phi. Now I want to find their cross products. I'm going to cheat a little bit and put these into a matrix. The top row is going to be the vector components i, j, and k. And just like before, I'm going to use a cofactor expansion. This is a little more lengthy, so I'm just going to write it out. 
So for I, let's cut the top row, cut the leftmost column, and I've got negative 9 sine squared phi cosine theta as my first term. Uh, minus 0 along the other diagonal. Now let's look at J. So again, cut the top row, this time cut the middle column, and I'm going to get 9 sine squared phi sine theta. And since the sine alternates, I need to multiply that by negative 1. Now let's look at K. So I'm going to cut the rightmost column right here, and again the top. And now let's multiply this out. So I'm just going to write it out. So along the main diagonal, I get negative 9 sine phi cosine phi sine squared theta. Now let's subtract the other diagonal. which is negative 9 sine phi sine, ah, sine phi cosine theta squared times cosine phi. So if I factor out a negative 9 sine phi cosine phi from both terms, I'm left with sine squared plus cosine squared, which is just 1. So I can simplify this. Like so. And now let's make sure that I'm oriented outward. So I take a look. I can see that I'm not with all three negative terms. So I'm going to go ahead and switch all the signs, and then that will orient my vector outward. And now I want to dot that with 0, 0, negative 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first two terms become 0, and my third term becomes negative 9 sine phi cosine phi. And now I'm all set, and I'm ready to integrate. So let me clear out some space. And I want to integrate with respect to theta and phi. And I hadn't set bounds for those before, but I'm going to go and do it now. So if I think about rotating around the z-axis in the xy plane, my hemisphere goes all the way around. So theta is going to be between 0 and 2 pi. And I've only got the bottom half of the hemisphere, so phi is going to go from pi over 2 down to pi. Well, up to pi. That's the upper bound. So now let's go and integrate with respect to theta. Well, this is all a constant in terms of theta. So when I integrate, I'm going to get 9 theta sine phi cosine phi. And to save myself a little room, I'm going to go and plug in theta equals 2 pi up here to get negative 18 pi. And then for theta equals 0, I plug that in and I actually just get 0. So I'm ready to integrate negative 18 pi sine phi cosine phi with respect to phi. And I'm going to use a u substitution. I'm going to say u equals sine of phi. And that makes du cosine phi d phi. So I'm just integrating 18u du, or excuse me, negative 18 pi u du. Now I just need to change my bounds of integration. So for pi over 2, u equals sine of pi over 2, which is going to be 1. So that's my lower bound. For my upper bound, I need the sine of pi, which is 0. All right, let's go and integrate. So, well, these bounds are backwards, and I have a negative sign here, so I'm going to switch them. 
and multiply by negative 1. So now I've got the integral from 0 to 1 of 18 pi u du, and that's going to give me 9 pi u squared. Evaluated from u equals 0 to u equals 1. So go ahead and plug in u equals 1, and I'm getting a 9 pi. And plug in u equals 0, I get 0. So the flux through the hemisphere is 9 pi meters cubed per second. And if I want to add that to the negative 9 pi newton, oh, excuse me, this is newton meters per second. Uh, newton meters squared. Too many units. If I add this 9 pi newton meter squared to the negative 9 pi newton meter squared I got for the disk, the actual flux through the whole surface, disk and its top, is going to be 0 newton meter squared. And now we're finished.